The Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG is one of the most expensive card games to play, but with websites like Nikijo Collectibles, Cherry Collectibles, and Australian Yu-Gi-Oh! Auctions, most of the cards you need are only one mouse click away. But what would happen if these sites just disappeared and we were left to source our cards only from sealed product? Rather than relying on these sites, we'd be relying on nothing more than the luck to pull the cards we need to complete our already bullshit expensive video decks. Over the coming weeks and months, starting with nothing more than three structure decks and a budget of $60 a week, I am going to build a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck with the goal of reaching the Oceanic World Championship qualifying event. Stick around to see me waste hundreds of dollars, open a ton of sealed product and hopefully kick a few bucks along the way. This is sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh! The Shadow Showdown. Three openings down and another one on the way. Another pack of dual overload to see if we can finally get our hands on that Verte Anaconda. I have a feeling this could be the last dual overload opening for a little while if we don't pull it. I will try and pick some up in the future, but I do have a bunch of other stuff on the way, and I'm thinking maybe about using that instead. I'm not going to go into details with this set. You know what's in this, but we do need to talk about our budget. Again, $58 for the dual overload. That means we have $2 left over for another week for that big purchase that I'm looking to pick up later on down the track. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into this opening and see if that anaconda is somewhere in this box. Grab my scissors. I hope you all checked out the last episode. If you did, you would have realized that we obviously still haven't got our hands on that Predator Plant Anaconda. Probably one of the worst openings that I've ever done on my channel, not to mention within the Sealed Yu-Gi-Oh! Challenge. Um, so let's have a look at the giant card. Dark Magician Girl, we don't really seem to have a lot of luck with anything with Dark Magician Girl in it, but today is the day that our luck is going to change. Remember that the more likes this video gets, the better the luck will be in the upcoming pulls. So make sure you're hitting that like button and the Yu-Gi-Oh gods are going to bless us with some amazing pulls. It seems to work for everybody else, so why not me as well? All right, I'm not even gonna look at which packs are which today. We are gonna go straight in. I am going to make sure I put the front card to the back so we do get a little bit of suspense towards the end of each pack. First of all, we have, get that to focus, Super Vehicroid Stealth Union, Hysteric Sign, Cybernetic Overflow, that's a nice ultra rare, Speedroid Hexasaucer, it's a Link Monster, it's a Link 3. It is a Selene Queen of the Master Magicians. Now this isn't um, great for our deck, but it probably won't be too bad sometime in the future with um, other decks that I'm looking to play. So that one will be going into the collection. Just to let you know what I will do as next week is episode five, I will take you through what we have opened up so far in our collection. Um, and yeah, we can we can have a little bit of a look to see if we've pulled any good stuff. I'll put it all in a nice binder and we can have a look at from there. So we have Malefic Territory, Blackwing Zephyrus the Elite. Wow, Angre Angre Come Umbrella. King Yu Sukui. And Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Oh my goodness, that is actually not a bad card at all. I was just talking at the end of the last episode how it would be nice to add a couple of hand traps to the deck. This actually could be one of the ones that we add in the future. So well done. That is a really good pull. You must be really hitting that like button now because we are getting some good luck in these packs. All right, can we keep up the... Keep up the momentum here. We have the Trilogy with the Giant Quads. And we have Enma's Judgment. Mystical Space Typhoon. There's a place set if we need a third. Malefic Territory. Let's go to the bottom. It's an XYZ. Oh, Madolce Pudding says Chocolate a la Mode. 
I'm going to put the Mystical Space Typhoon in the front because that might be the most relevant card. Three down, three to go. Front card to the back. Malefic Paradox Gear. Alien Shock Trooper M Frame. Blackwing Zephyros the Elite. Herald of Mirage Lights. It's an XYZ. It's a Link 2. Oh, it's another Union Carrier. We pulled one of these last week. It's not the Link 2 that we want or need, but this isn't an awful pull. Let's just put that there and get on with our next pack. Front card to the back. We have a Protector Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman. Zombie World. Salomon Great Almirage. Not bad. Ajama Emperor. Let's have a sneak peek. It's a spell card. No, it's a... Wow, it's a Starving Venom Lethal Dose Dragon. That artwork is really scary. We are down to our last pack. What can we pull out of it? Is this going to be the Predaplane Anaconda? Smash that like button. Give me all of the luck you can muster up, YouTube, because we need it right here. We have a Herald of Mirage Lights. We have a Phantasm Emperor Trilogy. We have Enma's Judgment. We have another Mystical Space Typhoon. Let's have a peek. It's blue. It's a Link 2. It's a Condemned Dark Lord. So close. We got trolled a couple of times there unfortunately but we did end up with a couple of cards that we might be able to put into the deck um, we are definitely going to look at putting in the copy of Phantasme and we will look at our copy of Mystical Space Typhoon as well um, I could actually try and look for something um, to do with uh, Union Carrier, if I decide to go that way, I'll have a look, have a bit of a play around to see what I can do. But that is about all that we'll be able to use out of this opening. Let's put a deck together. I'll see you on the other side of the update. All right, guys, it's time for a deck update for week four in our sealed only Shadows. What we can see in front of you are the cards going in. We're putting in an MST, Blackwing Zephyros the Elite, a Pot of Avarice, and a Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. I do believe that these are going to be some changes to give us a little bit more consistency in the deck and make us play through some of those tricky hands a lot easier. Now, first of all, I did happen to cut out the two main deck Lost Wind. They are going to go into the side deck. So I'll put those to the side over there. I also cut a copy of uh, Rishadol Wendy to make sure that, um, yeah, we weren't just seeing it in our hand too often. I had a look at the footage last week and I did feel like I saw that card just a little bit too much. So the changes to make there, I'm going to take out the Wendy, the Lost Winds. Just bear with me while I'm sleeving up, guys. Sorry. And we are going to put in a copy of Zephyros the Elite, Pot of Avarice, and MST. Now, I also want to make a few adjustments to the deck as well. That copy of MST, I'm not going to actually main deck. I'm going to side deck that. Because with Zephyrus the Elite, I want to play a continuous spell card so I can actually use the effect from the graveyard to pull it back to my hand and summon Zephyrus uh, from the graveyard if he's there. So I'm going to main deck that deck lockdown. I'd like to put Lost Winds into the side deck as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the Chanel Core and I'm going to take out the Hollow Giants. MST is going in. Gives us four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I am going to put the Phantasma in, so I might actually take the Necrofusion out. I've never sided the card in, and I don't think I'll need to in the future. And that gives us our fifteen card side deck. So. 
we've changed three cards in the main deck. We've added a few cards back into the side deck, including a third copy of MST and a Phantasme that we pulled this week. Other than that, the deck's relatively the same. Not too many changes, but I am hoping for a little bit more of consistency uh, in this week's duels. We're gonna play another three rounds online. I'm actually introducing um, the Project Ignis into the video this week and I'm going to see how that platform works. Stay tuned for the duels. I hope you enjoy them and I hope you enjoyed the update. Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below what changes you'd like to see to the deck so I know what product I should open in the future. Enjoy the duels and I'll see you on the other side. five and drawing one giving us a 50 percent overall win rating let's try and make it better this week match one we came up against the new Rika deck out of secret slayers this deck really had me going i didn't actually know too much about it um, but any deck that can play lone fire blossom and the predator plant engine is definitely one that needed to be looked out for that chimera tech uh, a Chimera Rafflesia card, that fusion monster, is pretty beast. As soon as he finishes his turn, he is going to grab a fusion spell from his deck to his hand. If that's not a broken effect, I don't know what is. The rank 8 card that um, they bring out pretty much very consistently is quite a good card. Amassing heaps and heaps of damage, um, making the advantage he got in that first couple of turns quite good that negates on the shit old fusion really hurt but we pushed forward to try and uh, improve the game state and get somewhere before losing the game he drew for turn this is turn number four as you can see i activated the reshadol incarnation to bring back the wendy and he continues to summon these monsters from his deck, from his graveyard, from his hand. And I'm just sitting here thinking, oh, what the hell are you doing and what is the end board going to look like? He seems to really have a good idea what he's doing now. He's got two of those rank eights on the field. Goes into battle phase. I do get to send one of his cards back to his deck, but he wins and takes game one. Let's see what game two looks like. Can we fare any better this time? So I opted to go second this time around because I do know how much damage he can put on the board and I just wanted to see what sort of board he would end up after a first turn. So he goes into his Jasmine Evil Thorn to bring out a couple more copies. goes into his rank 8, sets one card and passes to me. I'm not sure if going second against this deck was a good idea, but it seemed to fare a lot better for me, seeing I had Super Poly in my hand, ready to go. Sending the Wendy to um, summon the Beast of Field, I'm going to pass my turn to him. He will set a couple of cards and we'll see where we go from here. Drawing two off of Beast, discarding Wendy to gain, give me a special summon. This is where I realized that uh, having those Wendy's uh, to two instead of three in the deck has actually been quite useful. He's gonna go into a Synchro Six here, summing it out. Two monsters on the field, going into his rank eight, attacking attacking and leaving me with only a couple of monsters on the field. I've got the Lava Golem in hand, I tribute them away to Special Lava Golem. I go into my Shadol Fusion which is negated by the Solemn Judgment. I use my Incarnation to bring back Anoya Talus from the graveyard giving me a little bit of defense. I had to pass turn, there wasn't much else I could do. I do know that during the standby phase, he would take an extra thousand life points damage due to the effect of Lava Golem. He goes into his rank eight, does 2000 damage, and all he can do is pass turn to me. I flip up Anointalus, I flip up Wendy, 
and I activate a Rurashidol Incarnation from the grave, targeting his six after I flip up my dragon, sending it back to the deck. And he scoops, we are one and one, let's go to game three. Starting out with that Predator Planet engine again, this thing is huge, ultra polymerization into the uh, Chimera Flesia and into, uh, I think that's Aromatherapy Jasmine. More Ricker shenanigans here, summoning all of these monsters to his side of the field, going into his rank 8, having a face up continuous spell on the field. All I can do is go into Super Poly once again to bring out the Annoyer Talus, drawing 2 and ending my turn. He goes into Instant Fusion, taking a thousand damage to get his level 5 tuner on the field going into the Synchro 6. Evil Thorn comes out and he also specials a heap of Ricker monsters from his deck to once again clear my board and leave nothing there for me. I take a 4000 damage total to my turn and I have a handful of monsters with nothing more to do than set one and pass it back to him. I understand now why Dried Winds is such an expensive card on the market. It is pretty good doing a little bit of recycling, adding a few life points, and it stays up and happens every single turn. Not just player turn, but the opponent's turn as well. We can see those rank 8s coming. I'm taking all the damage here, and that is game 3 finished. He wins, and we're off to round 2 against Zephra. I wasn't sure what to expect against the Zephyr deck, but I knew if I could get Winder on the field fairly early, it wouldn't be too much of a problem. We go into a Shekinaga, we go into a Construct, and we destroy some back row after we send Dragon. We do some big fat damage there that turn, leaving him on 5200 life points. He special summons Magellan. Special summons, I think... I'm not sure what that Madolce card is, and he brings out the Yangzing Zephra and a Baguska, making sure all of my monsters' effects cannot activate and they are in defense mode. I destroy one back row with my MST, I pass it back to him and wait for him to detach another material. He goes into Barricade Bull Blocker. Pendulum summons for one, going into Providence, doing a little bit of damage here, but I do get uh, my trap card in the graveyard. He kills my construct, but I get my uh, El Shadol fusion back. Oh, wow. I made a mistake setting it there, knowing that the abomination would be able to pop it in the end phase, but because he destroyed um, my card I did get my El Shadol fusion back from the graveyard special summoning into black luster soldier I have a bit of a body on the field he destroys it fairly quickly I wasted my uh, incarnation here I probably should have saved it for another turn going into my Zephyrus the elite I have to set it hoping that I will get another turn He pendulum summons for two, using the effect to add to hand. Metaphys Horus comes out. He does some searching, steals my monster, goes into Granite Gallant, and he attacks me for game. We are going into game two. get off to a good start there I play deck lockdown so he can't do too much it is destroyed by his pendulum card though so I super poly into an El Shadol construct hoping to take care of any of his special summoned monsters he ends I draw flip up beast I draw another two cards I put of avarice for five Drawing two cards, should all fusing, and he scoops. Let's go to game three and see how this round fared.
pretty lackluster first turn he activates and it's over just like that super quickly we are one and one we have one round left and this game is on the new ignis platform we came up against counter fairies so i wasn't too concerned about this match up here As you can see, we're off to a pretty good start. We do have quite good board presence here. Drastic drop off is a really good counter trap, but making me discard dragon is actually good in my favor when playing a trap deck. I did get to destroy something in his back row. Construct just goes ahead and it destroys a monster. He gets a bountiful Artemis on the field. I bring back my trick clown. It's my turn. Let's see what we can do. He makes me discard my Hedgehog. I search, he scoops, and we are going into the second game. All right, here we go. Game two, he sets one. I destroy his back row, try and attack into his monster, but he has Honest in his hand. I destroy his back row, activate Reshidol Incarnation, flip up. Had to protect my life points a little bit there. I set my Hedgehog, I flip up my Hedgehog with Incarnation's effect from the graveyard, going into El Shidol Winder and attacking over his monster. Now I know this isn't a special summon heavy opponent, but I am pretty sure not many of his monsters are bigger than 2200. He special summons, goes into, uh, attacks into Ariel. I bring back the Squamata and a Scoop. We are two wins, one loss, and that is all of today's games. Week four results, two and one. Overall results, we are 13 matches played, seven wins, five losses, one draw, and we are just a touch off 54% when it comes to our overall win percentage. You better be sticking around for the next few weeks. I'm expecting more and more wins as this deck gets better. Stay tuned for the wrap up for the round and the week, and I'll see you after the break. Wow, what an exciting way to end the round. I do first want to say that I did enjoy using the new platform, uh, Project Ignis. I think that it's very much like Yu Gi Oh! Pro. You can definitely tell that the guys who made Yu Gi Oh! Pro had a big hand in putting Project Ignis together. Love the way that you actually get to choose the chains from the graveyard and not just click one, two, three. I really look forward to getting um, getting deeper and deeper in that platform as we go. Still working out the dueling book kinks. Every time I get on there to play, people see that I'm playing a Shadol deck and they simply just quit. Maybe I need to organize a few dueling book duels with some of my subscribers or some of my viewers so I know that they'll actually stick the match out. But that's enough of that. Let's get into the recap for this week. We went X1 after our three rounds, losing to the new Wicked deck. I do think we probably could have won that. Uh, I, probably my non-familiarity with the deck is what lost that for us. But going second did seem to be the best way to go about it. Uh, moving forward, I hope to come up against that deck once again to try and uh, see if I can get a shit old winder on the field. And I'm pretty sure that'll basically end the turn for that deck straight away. Uh, the Zephyr deck, I wasn't too worried about at all. I knew that if we could get Winder on the field, that that deck relied very heavily on special summoning, and that it'd be really hard for the deck to uh, for the deck to clear uh, a Winder off the board if they couldn't attack over it. The final round was against Counter Fairies. Um, it's too slow. Like Shadows are so much better than that deck. If they can open up with a handful of counter traps to start with, it might slow down the Shadol deck a little bit, but when it push comes to shove and it gets a little bit grindy into the turns fours and fives, if they haven't amassed a heap of advantage off of Bountiful Artemis, I'm pretty sure that the Shadol deck will always run over the counter fairies. So the wins that we did get today weren't exactly uh, big wins, not huge notches on the belt, but we will take those wins. As the slide at the end of the duel said, we are sitting at a 53 or 54% win advantage, and we are going to look at pushing that higher going into week five. 
Talking about week five, we need to decide what we're going to open. I think it might be a little bit of a mixed case this week. I do have some more dual overload to open, but I might have a break from that because what I'm looking at doing is making our clown engine a little bit more consistent. I managed to pick up a few packs of Clash of Rebellion, and I also would like to see if I can work Union Carrier into the extra deck with the lockout card, our Buster Dragon, Buster Dragon Whelp. Um, from Breaker of Shadows. All the cards I'm looking for next week are going to be commons. I'm hoping I can get my hands on some of the special editions. Breaker of Shadows was that set where every pack came out with a holographic card. So fingers crossed I can get my hands on some of those before we're due to do the round for next week. Changes to the deck. Based on what I saw this week, I was pretty happy. Um, the Dropping of a Wendy was a good move in my opinion. I saw her enough to make her a useful card, but not so much that she clogged up my hand like she did last week. I still would like to see a little bit more disruption. Maybe trying to pick up or pull some Called by the Graves would be great to try and get rid of those hand traps that we keep seeming to run into. Having our Shadol Fusion negated by an Ash Blossom or something of the like is always extremely difficult to get past, especially when that is our only play. Ultimately, the Verte Anaconda is still on the list of cards that we do need to pull. Um, that card is going to be super important moving forward, especially with um, Red Eyes Dragoon coming out in the near future. I don't think Anaconda is going to get a reprint soon, so there will be more dual overload in the future. Other than that, I was quite happy with the way the deck ran. Uh, the duels that you would have seen earlier, they did. They did look a lot better than last week. We, they weren't long duels at all. The opponent seemed to scoop it up quite quickly when he knew we were going to win. So maybe next week I will be trying to push out those duels a little bit longer to actually see what the outcome and what sort of board we can make. I have been practicing making the Ahashima board, the Bujinki Link Monster. It is a pretty beast board if you can pull that off. So I'll be looking forward to doing that in the coming weeks as well. Until then, on Duels Down Under, this is Sealed Yu-Gi-Oh! The Shadol Showdown, Episode 4, and I'll see you next week for Episode 5.